Hello my friends, and welcome to Tom's Tinkering and Adventures. Today I've been uh, trying to get some work done on some stuff here, but it's just been kind of a busy, non-busy day. Um, kind of just hung out a little bit this morning, and then uh, my wife wanted to do some running around, and I had to get some stuff, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then um, took her took her out for some uh, lunch at the uh, Sioux Plantation, which is uh, generally not my favorite, but reasonably priced, decent food, it's okay. And I currently have a quarter hog leg here cooking up on my Bubba keg. And this is a Kamado style, like kind of a, a big green egg style, but this is stainless steel, insulated. So it's, it's not even really hot on the outside. I'm trying to get the temps down here. We're at about 260 maybe there. It was hovering around 300. This thing is hard to keep the temps down once they start going up. You can control it here with the vents on the top and the vent on the bottom, which is just barely open. The problem is if you choke it out, then it won't, then you gotta light it again and it's a pain to get it going. I recently bought this, uh, electric charcoal starter here which worked okay well, let's take a peek at it i know i probably shouldn't open it it's been in here for about two hours mm, smells good but uh let's see the trophy wife just headed off to go to her uh gym so i'm gonna go out to my global domination headquarters and i'll show you what i got going on today we got a lot going on here in the global domination headquarters of Tom's Tinkering and Adventures. Um, there you go. So I went shopping the other day. Uh, I was at the 99 cent store. I don't know if any of y'all ever go there, but I buy this degreaser here from the 99 cent store. It's called Totally Awesome. And a gallon of it at the 99 cent store is $3.99. You can buy a spray bottle of it for 99 cents. This really doesn't have a whole lot to do with today, but I just thought I would throw this out here. If you're ever in the 99 cent store and you're looking for some degreaser, this stuff's pretty good. All right, let me swing you over here. The Honda Shadow. We started working on this the other day. I got a few things left to do on it. I did get new tires put on the rims here. Still got stickers on them, just like NASCAR. And when I installed the new tires, I told the owner that I would flush out the brakes front and back for him. So I did the front and on the back brakes, the pads are worn down almost to the metal. So I ordered up some brake pads for him. I got those coming. So I haven't, uh, haven't flushed the rear brakes yet. I need to flush the coolant. And I got some AutoZone coolant here. So we need to mix this 50-50 with water. I got my high performance super tech. I think that's Walmart brand. I don't know. Brake fluid here. And then we'll be through with the brakes on this and the wheels and the carburetors. And if you watched it, you know that I had, if you watched the video I did on this before, you know it has a fuel leak from the fuel pump. I looked up the fuel pump, it's about $150 from Honda. Maybe it was closer to 200. There's some knockoff Chinese ones that are about 15, $20. To replace that fuel pump takes a couple hours because you have to remove a whole bunch of stuff. Now, I was doing a little bit of research online. I found out people are adding uh, aftermarket filter, or filters, fuel pumps. Let me get over here close to the bike, see if we can show you where they've been installing them on here. So the uh, original fuel pump is mounted way up underneath here. Hard to get to. Um, from what I'm reading, you're supposed to remove the entire rear f uh, fender, fender supports and then a bunch of other stuff. But from the online stuff I've been reading, people are mounting fuel pumps here. I guess they're getting rid of this tool kit. So I purchased a 
fuel pump here from AutoZone. For $40, lifetime warranty. Very close to the same rating as the stock pump. And it looks like it'll probably fit there. Now, like I said, we're just gonna have to figure out what we're gonna do with those uh, tools and that sort of stuff. But the factory toolkits on these things are pretty much crap anyway. So yeah, it looks like it'll fit there. We'll take it out of the plastic and we'll kind of make sure it fits with the cover on here before we proceed because I'm still gonna have to still gonna have to follow the fuel line down from the tank and then up to the carburetors and then I'm also gonna have to track down the wires that go down to the original fuel pump and I guess I'm probably just gonna cut everything off and just leave it down there so not an ideal solution, but I would rather, if this was my bike, and this is what I told the owner, I said I would rather install this lifetime warranty pump from AutoZone than a Chinese pump, even if the Chinese pump fits in the original position. And even though this costs more than the Chinese pumps, I can probably get this done in an hour, whereas the Chinese pump would take me about three hours probably to do. All right, and other stuff that we did. I went to the machine shop yesterday. There we go, safety third. Went to the machine shop the other day, and I dropped off this cylinder head for the Yamaha Rhino to get it surfaced. So this has been machined down. The place I go to, awesome. They were quick. Had it done in about, well... I dropped it off in the afternoon and they gave me a call in the morning. So they were done quick. And the mailman dropped off my gasket, head gasket. And the head stud kit said it should be here tomorrow. So we can start working on the Rhino and get that thing back up and operational for desert season. And then I need to start Looking at these two under the covers here. Oh, this one's kind of got the cover off of it. The dirt bikes. Get those ready to go for the season. But let me uh, get started on coolant flush. To do a coolant flush on a Honda Shadow. And uh, this is a Honda Shadow 1100 Sabre um, 2002, if I am not mistaken. Many of them are the same all the way back even to the 80s when these first came out. You gotta get the seat off and the tank off. The fill is right here. Let me hold you here real quick. This cover goes over this. So you gotta pull a couple of little um, plastic clips out of there to get that off. And you gotta get the tank off to get to that point. So that's where the fill cap is. Now the drain, the drain is way down. I don't even know if I can go low enough with this camera. There we go. Look at that. Way down here. This is the water pump housing. Now this bolt here is the drain. You can tell it's the drain because it has a copper crush washer behind it. I'm not putting this bike on the lift because this bike is big and heavy and getting the bike on the lift is not easy. Getting it off is really not easy. There we go, we're already draining and look at that. It looks awful. I don't know if I'll be able to get in there. But what will happen is if I get this drain out, uh, just a tiny bit of the water, or what should be coolant. I'm just gonna let that drop right into the bucket. Just a little bit of it will come out until I open that cap. And then when I open that cap, it's gonna come shooting straight out at my face and at the camera down here. So what we wanna do is open this and then try to do like a little two-handed maneuver 
where I'm holding this drain bucket that I have here, which hopefully will be big enough. Hold this up at an angle so that I can catch the uh, coolant slash water that's gonna come out of this thing. At the same time as I take that cap off. Wow, everything that's coming out of here looks totally crappy. Doesn't look like coolant, that's for sure. Sorry about the poor camera angles. We're working right off the floor level here. All right, let's see if we can get that thing out. Yeah, so you see how nothing is coming out. So I am gonna have to reach up and over, pop the cap off while at the same time straddling over the bike and holding this up at an angle like that to keep it from shooting all over everything. Sorry, I don't have enough hands to run all this at one time. So you're just gonna have to imagine all that coolant getting everywhere. I'll show you. General Motors used to make orange coolant, but uh, this is not orange coolant. That is rust. And I did pretty good. I only spilled when I took this thing out because it was almost full. It's not too bad. I didn't get too much on the, on the cardboard down here. We're gonna flush that. I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, a bit of clean mixed coolant in there just to uh, flush a little bit out and then put the uh, bolt back in it and fill this thing up. As it is normal for me, I have taken it too far. I worked my way into here and actually removed the old fuel pump. I probably didn't need to, but I still took it out. I got it up over here. I just cut the wires on it because it's going to go to the trash. And I can put the new, the old wires onto the new fuel pump. It's actually pretty close in size. And it's got me thinking if I should um, install it under there. The only issue I got with installing it under there, well, number one, I have to cut that bracket off. And this bracket's a little bit small. But maybe I could put this onto there. It's going to be a pain in the ass to get under there, and I don't have both the inlet and the outlet on the same side. So, making, I'm going to have to get a threaded insert for this too. I'm going to look around, I might have one in here. But, making it so that they would both end up on this side would mean I'd have to put a 90 degree on here, and then maybe even another 90 degree. And run it along the body somewhere. Not sure I'm going to do that. The other option, like I said, is to put it under the side cover, which is a common mod. I've looked this up. I've seen a few people do it, so this isn't my idea, but you can mount it right about there. And then I just have to go from the fuel filter, which is right there, up to here. And then from here, well, this is the fuel line that goes to carburetors right there. So that's pretty convenient. Although this is a little bit too big a diameter, so I'm gonna have to um, figure that out, what I'm gonna do with that. But let me dig around, see if I have a fitting for this. If not, then we're probably pretty much done today. Except for the pork, which I need to go check right now. Well, I'm glad I went and checked on the barbecue. It was stalled out a little bit, so I had to uh, stoke it up, get it going. It was a little bit low on temperature, but uh, I guess I'll be up late cooking that pork leg. Anyway, here we have fuel pump. Well, I found a fitting, perfect fitting. It even had the little uh, fuel nipple on the end of it. And this thing fits right where the tool kit was at. And I even just put the strap over it here for now. And this fuel line fit pretty good. I'm kind of concerned about this right here, but we'll see how it seals up. This uh, 
it's got this kind of 45 degree elbow here so that hopefully will seal up okay and I cut off the uh, fittings that came on this pump and then I took the electrical line that came off the original fuel pump that I cut off and I attached it with these crimp connectors that have heat shrink built into them there's my heat gun Kind of helps seal them up there. See how that shrunk up on there? Just takes a minute. Should seal it up. Even the one in the back is sealing up. That indirect heat. focuses now I got to just uh, plug that in that plugs in right up here on top of the air box right in this bundle there's a connector for that you plug that in put the tank on and give her a try we'll see how she goes started up fine and ran fine but well, you probably can't see it, but there's a bunch of fuel in there, and it's leaking right there where I said it would. We're good there. We're good everywhere else. So we need to figure something out for here. I'm going to try a um, regular um, clamp, hose clamp, and see if that works. The hose clamp solved our problem. We got no fuel leakage. She's running pretty good. And I just got the brake pads, so I'm going to get those installed. Flush out this um, brake system for the rear. Get some new brake fluid in there. And the bike will be pretty good. One more done. Let's get it out of here. And I got two more projects coming in the garage soon. So we'll see what that's all about. Hopefully I can knock them out and make some more room for whatever's next. I got to get to my barbecue. Thank you very much for watching. Get out there and find your adventure. Adios.